Hey everyone, I wanted to shoot a video of my home lab slash home network from a hardware perspective as it stands here in 2023, February 2023. I built this lab out and my home network basically in November of 2020. So it's been about two and a half years and I've had lots of plans that I, that I haven't followed through with. So this video is part to just show what I've got and basically hopefully give some folks some ideas as well as for me to take stock of what I have and hopefully motivate me to make some improvements throughout 2023. So hope you enjoy what you see. All right. So in this unfinished area of my basement, uh, where there's, you know, a furnace, uh, and this extra space, I've got what is mostly a unify setup. So at the top here, we'll just go top to bottom and then I'll I'll dive into more specifics. Specifics. So we've got the UDM Pro, of course, a patch panel for all the jacks and drops going up into the house, a 48 port PoE Pro. Um, I think it's the USW Pro 48. Another patch panel, and then down here we've got the USW aggregation switch. Uh, I'll t <laughs> I'm not using this to its fullest potential, but I, I kind of couldn't, couldn't deny getting it on its price point basically. And it's kind of future proofing my network. I've got a spot for another patch panel. So this is super important. Kind of a principle you should try to try to adhere to is that you should be able to pull out an appliance without having to pull out another one. So you notice these ports from the patch panel all go into here. Um, there's not a bunch of ports coming out of this patch panel and crossing over into here. So I can actually pull out this entire switch without having to pull this one out or this one out in, in order to do so. So you, so you could imagine that one of these DAC cables was coming all the way across up into here. I'd have to pull out, I'd have to disconnect things from both of these in order to get this appliance out. So obviously in, in my, in, in like a home lab scenario, I, you know, my wife and I are inconvenienced because the internet goes out, but generally it's a good idea to be able to pull out an appliance without having to pull others out. And so that's why I've always left a gap. So I have patch, patch gap, appliance, patch, appliance, patch, appliance. And so here's the 10 gig aggregate switch. We'll get into that in a second. I have a spot for a patch panel. Uh, haven't used it yet. Here's the UNVR pro. So. All the cameras in you know home surveillance I've got in the house are Unify as well. This guy's got three, you can sort of tell by the lights, three, four gigabyte Seagate um, surveillance rated drives in it. Uh, I think I'm running 10 cameras at 1080p, maybe, maybe a couple are, are a little lower, and it's well over 30 days of, of backup data. And then we get into the heart of the operation, so it's usually quite a bit louder in here but I turned these off for the video. This is a Dell PowerEdge 4R720, and this is a Dell PowerEdge R510. And so this one is obviously quite a bit newer. It's got um, 192 gigabytes of RAM, and it's got dual Xeon processors. I think they're E5-2680s running at 2.7 gigahertz, so uh, 32 cores total. This one's running Proxmox, about 8 to 10 VMs. Uh, one's like a Minecraft server, and then the rest are... Another one is for some home automation stuff, and the rest are just, you know, I'm messing around with them in a, in a home lab fashion. Um, you know, running Kubernetes or whatever I'm messing with uh, on any given day. It's got, I think, five 250 gigabyte SSD SATA drives in it. And they're in a RAID 0, so hardware RAID 0. So there's a hardware RAID card on this guy. If it dies, this is all gone, and we'll we'll get to why that's okay when we get to the 510. Um, but they're in a RAID 0, super fast. They're nothing special, some Western digital, you know, consumer grade whatever I bought two years ago. And then we've got this Dell PowerEdge R510. And I, <laughs> well, I like this one. But I love this thing. It's like it's it's so interesting. So it's got the 12 bays here, and what's and there's several configurations, but I went for the one that had the most bays. And it's got two 
inside as well. So you've got 14 bays that can hold SATA or SAS drives, uh, which is <laughs> incredible. Uh, and I think this thing, I don't think it's totally full, but basically this is my TrueNAS server. So I did some upgrades on this when I bought it. I didn't pay much for it. I think I paid 250 bucks two years ago. You probably get them for way cheaper than, and I think it came with some SAS drives, some old SAS drives. And so this guy's got two ZFF, ZFS pools, and I won't go too deep because it's more of a hardware hardware video. Uh, I think we've got a six terabyte total usable space um, pool, which is comprised of four two terabyte SAS drives. So these old things came with a bunch of SAS drives, and I repurposed them into one pool, and I'll show you. I've got like 10 extras. Uh, and so basically one of those can fail, but I basically have a six terabyte pool uh, using the SAS drives. And then I've got another 20 terabyte pool of usable space with six four terabyte drives. So two pools on this guy. Each of these has a 250 gigabyte SSD boot drive. Um, and I'm not saying that's the best configuration. <laughs> this one's safe because it backs up to this, but you know, don't take this video as backup advice. Um, I would I would do things quite a bit differently if I was starting over. Um, but the nice thing is, every night this Proxmox server backs up all its stuff to the TrueNAS server. Um, I have backed this up once to S3 Glacier, uh, but I do need a you know don't take this video as backup advice like I was saying. Uh, but there is some redundancy though, so some of these drives can fail, and I'm going to be okay. Uh, and, I'll, and I won't lose any of my VMs. Um, and so then you'll see, if we go a little lower, I've got the trip light surge protection. Um, on the other side, there's also outlets that all this, all these servers are plugged into. Uh, and you'll see this gaping hole in the setup, figuratively and literally. I do not have a battery backup. So that's kind of the biggest problem I have. I have not sprung to get a UPS backup. I, I really should, uh, but I just... <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know, I haven't been focused on this the last couple years, uh, and that's something I really need for this setup. You really should have that. This whole rack has survived in two and a half years, I think four or five full power outages. So it's been okay, but it's definitely not ideal. So the next kind of big spend is UPS on this, and then maybe... I have a sub panel here, which is really nice. Maybe I'll give this, this whole rack a dedicated 20 amp circuit. Right now it's running on two 15s, one there and, and, and one further down. Um, another project you can see I partially started is I bought this nice piece of plywood. Uh, I was gonna paint it black and cut it to size and bolt it down, never did that. So another reason I'm making this video is to uh, get myself to do more of this stuff. Cause it's really nice to be able to have like, you know, a keyboard and a monitor on top of the rack that you can plug into these machines as you need to. Uh, something else I did that was, sorry if you can hear the furnace behind me, but something else I did that was kind of interesting and something that's been holding me back is <laughs> I made these 15 foot uh, pigtail cables myself going into my into my patch panels over here. Um, if I could do it again, I did save money. I bought like a thousand feet of Cat 5e and did all these myself a couple years ago. I think if I could do it again, I would just buy 20 of those 15, you know, 40 of those 15 foot cables on Amazon. But at any rate, the way I've done it is into the patch panel. These are, these are Keystone Jack patch panels. So each 15 foot cable comes in, uh, rolls out here and then comes into the drops from the house. And so, uh, it rolls into another Keystone and they're all labeled. So one Oh three, 106 and then if we go over here I'll show you one that will be more interesting in a second but 224 this one's 115 uh, a lot of guys will say you know oh you're you're introducing a point of failure uh, you know every keystone you've got but I've been running this for two and a half years and I've had the, the full bandwidth I expect and everything so I don't know I think for the the flexibility I, I can unplug this whole this whole rack and roll it out the door and not have to undo any punch down keystone you know punch down jacks or anything I can I can reconfigure this if I want to send four of these drops to different ports I just do it right here and they're all labeled 
So back to that labeling, if I bring you back to the front here. So it's not labeled on the panel, uh, but, but I know that this is patch panel one and this is patch panel two. So if I go see a keystone back, back there that is uh, 1.09, I know that it's port nine. Or if I see 2.24, like I showed you earlier, I know that it corresponds to this this cable right here, which happens to be a, a 10 gig SPF drop from the, the 48 port switch here. So this is super nice. I can, I can move that stuff around and do whatever I need to. All that upfront work was really nice. I've never messed with that. I've never messed with this ever again. I know exactly what I need to do back there whenever I need to change things around. Uh, and so before we go back to those uh, ports going through the wall there, uh, this aggregate switch, both of these machines have uh, 10 gig NICs, and so they're connected through this 10 gig backbone, and that's pretty nice because I can run Proxmox VMs directly off these disks, and you don't even notice because uh, they have the 10 gig uplink, and I also have a 10 gig uplink going back through that room, which I'll which I'll show you in a second. One more thing I wanted to show, which hopefully I can with one hand, is I, I kind of sprung. I don't know how much they are now, but at the time it was pretty painful, but I sprung for the the uh, sliding rails for these power edges, um, which is really nice. So you, you pop this off, you can do whatever work you need to do, and just slide it back in, turn it back on, it's awesome. Uh, I love this old hardware, so they're, they're very inefficient when it comes to power. Uh, and they and you can see they're actually complaining at me that these yellow lights mean that they're um, there's actually two power supplies for redundancy and I only plug one in. Uh, but at any rate, like this R720 running eight VMs around the clock pulls like 180 watts. It's super wasteful and I think the 510 is even worse because it's running three times as many hard drives and it's an, it's an older generation Xeon and an older machine. Um, in an ideal world, I'd be running some solar power to kind of offset offset this. Uh, but I, ju I just, I don't know. I, I and someday I will do the solar, but I just love kind of breathing life into this old hardware. Uh, and I've been running these things around the clock for over two and a half years. And when I first caught them, I was, I was super excited. We were living in an apartment still. I had them set up on the floor. I'll, 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 I'll add a picture of that. Um, and yeah, I got them all set up and brought them in here. I was super excited. I just, these things have just been so phenomenal. It's, it's, it's incredible. Um, and you can, I don't. I didn't pay much for them at the time. That was two and a half years ago, and I, they're probably even cheaper now. I'm, I'm tempted to buy more, uh, especially if you had some sort of solar strategy to offset them. Like these things are awesome, and, and I'm not doing anything, you know, out of out of this world with them. I'm just messing around in my home lab and storing stuff on this on this true NAS. Uh, and so we've got a 10 gig link uh, coming off of this guy, and another one. And I'll show you back over here sorry, sorry about that furnace so uh, it's hard to tell from this angle but these are stairs so this is a stairway up to the main floor and I put this jack in when we moved in one of these is a 10 gig link and another one is a 1 gig link right to the 48 port switch and what's going on there is uh, under the stairs here uh, I've got another kind of little network area so I'll walk you over to this unfinished area and so I'm using this as sort of a workshop slash computer room so I've got for the purposes of this video I've got the main machine here and then over here I've got sort of a test bench area and the Nabu here <laughs> and so some cables coming out here and I'll show you what's going on with that so behind this wall is the stairs and so this was actually totally enclosed when I bought the house and we, we, you know, we cut it open and I put some wiring in here and some outlets. And so here's my machine, you know, the machines for those monitors, uh, the main rig, and then, uh, another one. And then if we go over here, we can see this is actually the other side of that wall. So the network room is on the, or the rack rather is on the other side. And remember we've got a 10 gig and a one gig coming out. And so over here is my totally overkill setup. This is the Unified 24 Port Pro 
PoE switch, and it's got the 10 gig uplink. Another 10 gig going to that other machine I just showed you, my main my main computer, and it's got a 2.5 gig NIC, uh, and all these drops coming out of or all these drops coming into this 24 port panel from this sort of media media outlet here, and so. Um, there's no reason for me to have done it this way in hindsight. I totally, I had, I have enough space on the 40, 48 gig or 48 port switch, excuse me, to run all these straight through. But, um, this is, this is how I have it set up a little excessive. Uh, so if we go back out here, all those ports that I just showed you from that media, media kind of pass through or coming out down there. Um, and then they're coming up this trunk here and they branch off and some of them go to one to this TV and a raspberry Pi behind it. And we've got the, um, one access point there. I've got three other access points in the house. And then the main reason I had designed it this way is I, for better or worse, bought these unify power over ethernet led panels. And so these have been great, but a lot of people don't even know Unify made these <laughs> and it made a lot more sense three years ago. Uh, the Unify website has made it very clear. I mean, you can't even find them anymore. Um, so <laughs> yeah, they have super nice. It's a super nice setup. They've got this switch. You can, you can, I think you can dim them with the switch and, um, it's super nice. And this is of course another drop going to that uh, 24 port there, but yeah, we'll see. I, I think Unify is done with these. So hopefully, hopefully I'm able to, keep, hopefully I'm able to keep using them. So hopefully you found that interesting and could figure out kind of some of my thought process behind why I bought some of that stuff and, and why I like it. If you're interested, I have, you know, 10 cameras running on that UNVR, a bunch of other access points. And of course this workshop I could make videos about. So yeah, let me know what you think, and uh, thanks for watching.